Section 10.3. We still are in chapter 10, so if you can believe it, I'm in the shadows again. We are still talking about circles and arcs. Minor arcs, specifically, are congruent. Pause it, write this down if you have a packet. If and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. If and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So in taking a look at that circle, notice we don't have a center anymore. Without a center, we don't have a central angle. Without a central angle, we don't have congruent arcs. But we can know that those arcs are congruent if their chords are congruent. Picture a nice circular log or cake or pie. If you grab a knife and cut off this end, I know most of the time you cut it through the middle, but then you get a lot of frosting all on the outside. You cut CD, but as long as you cut AB exactly the same, you and your little brother are going to both get the same piece of cake with the same amount of frosting around the outside. So if arc AB is congruent to arc DC, then segment AB is congruent to segment DC. And remember, if and only if works the other way around. If the chords are congruent, then the arcs are congruent. If the arcs are congruent, then the chords are congruent. And that's the way it works if you don't have a central angle. Next one, pause it if you need to write this. A diameter is perpendicular to a chord if and only if, there it is again, you can abbreviate it IFF, if and only if it bisects the chord and the arc. If the diameter bisects the chord and the arc, it's perpendicular. Take a look at this drawing. Picture paints a thousand words. You've got this drawing. You have a circle. You know that it's a diameter. You can see there that I threw a center in there. It's only a diameter if it goes through the center. If it doesn't, it's just a chord. You, that diameter has to both be perpendicular to the chord. If it's perpendicular, not only does this whole chord CD get bisected, but also the arc gets bisected which means CB is exactly the same size as BD. Want the same size cake with the same amount of frosting all around the outside? Cut the diameter right through the middle of the cake first. Then slice that piece off. Automatically, you and your little sister are getting the same size piece of cake. And then the third one, two chords are congruent. Huh, there's if and only if again. Two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Equidistant from the center. Segment AB, and again, you have a lot of drawing to do if you don't have a packet for this. Segment AB is exactly the same size as segment CD, two chords are congruent, if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So notice here we said the measure of segment EF and the measure of segment EG. If that distance is the same as that distance, then we know that they are congruent. But what are these little right angle symbols in here for? You have to, when you're measuring something, like how far away is that, you have to measure at a perfect perpendicular so that you get the same measurement as somebody else does. You can't say, hey, how far is it to get to segment CD? If you're standing here and you want to know, something just shut off, and you want to know how far is it to get to segment CD, you can't run like this and somebody else runs like that and then you both measure it. <coughs> when you are measuring distance between a point and a segment or a line, you have to run or measure at a perfect perpendicular so that everybody measures it exactly the same. Okay, I mean picture that if you, here's you and your friend, oops, your friend has two arms, but that's okay. We're not all alike.
here's you and your friend. Your friend's bigger than you are. And you're standing here, and you say, I'll race you to the lake. Last one in's a rotten egg. And here's your lake. Okay, if you're going to race to the lake, you're not going to run like this to that part of the lake while your friend runs to this part of the lake. He's going to run at a right angle and beat you there every time. So whenever it says equidistance or you're measuring a distance to a, a length, a segment, you have to make it 90 degrees. Makes sense. All right, remember all of these are if and only ifs. So this one works backwards. If they told you that the arc and the chord were congruent to each other, then you could make the perpendicular line. If they told you the arcs were congruent and the segments were congruent, you could put in the perpendicular because it's if and only if. Same thing here. If they told you the arcs were congruent, then the chords are congruent. If they told you chords are, then arcs are. So that's how you got three conditional statements, or actually they're biconditionals, if and only ifs on section 10.3. You will have to apply them to how they work on homework.